more at eeservices.com. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Hey, our buddy from Unidragon is back. Yeah, I know. How do you know? Well, the owl told me. The owl told you know? Yeah, he tells me everything. Yeah, we, we, we've talked about this guy before. He's the, he's the puzzle guy. He's the puzzle guy. That's correct. They do, of course, have the owl, and the owl is available for you to now get with Prime Free Delivery. Awesome. We've made it easier for people to find the owl. Yeah, I know. The owl told me about that, too. <laughs> the owl did? What did the owl tell you? He, he told me to go on to the Tech Time Radio website and forward slash sponsors. Wow. The owl is just telling you everything. Well, make sure if you're purchasing the Unidragon from Tech Time Radio, you're going to go to techtimeradio.com forward slash sponsors. Make sure you use our special Tech Time code. You know what the code is, Mike? What's the Tech Time code? Well, on Amazon and on a purchase order through our site, use the code Tech Time. Really? Yeah, that's spelled T E C H T I M E. Wow. Hooked on Phonics worked for you, didn't it? And it's got a link so you can immediately click and purchase Unidragon off of Amazon. Don't get fooled by fake puzzle people out there trying to sell you imitation puzzles. Go and find the brand you can trust, unidragon.com. And again, go to techtimeradio.com forward slash sponsors because the owl will tell you no place better to buy it than with the Tech Time Radio code. And there's three sizes. That's right, Mike. There's three sizes. We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio and then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn, you now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, mmm. Oh. Technology News of the Week, the show that is for the everyday common person with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. I'm Nathan Mum, and welcome to our show. We are live streaming today, uh, 4 to 6 p.m. on Saturdays. Everybody knows that those are the times we do. If you're not catching us, <laughs> 4 to 6 p.m. on Saturday, which means Lay Monday, it out. Lay which it means out. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, not four to six, and Sunday. There you that go. That means you're getting a rebroadcast. Good so you're all seven. So that's, that's good. That's right. So, so if you get in a rebroadcast, you can always go to TechTimeRadio.com and stay up on the latest news information. We got our stories. We got top of the day information and in our blogs and our upcoming newsletter will be coming on out from us. I can't wait to hear what we're going to be writing about. I don't know. We need to talk about that at our next production meeting, we're don't gonna we? We're going to write on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Thursday? Friday. Is that what you're going to do? All right. Well, <laughs> welcome to the show. So again, make sure if you're listening to rebroadcast, visit us on techtimeradio.com and you can find out all the information. We are a two-hour technology show that talks about technology without having to geek out. On our first hour, we have an Amazon story that roars like a lion. We have a special guest who will be talking. Like <laughs> okay, I, yeah, they, they, like that was I, good. There you go. Uh, we have a special guest who will be talking about putting together a documentary or movie with industry technology secrets. We have a tech company stopping the testing of marijuana on its standard drug tests. Netflix is offering some video game subscription. We have <laughs> tons of things of going. We have a company that will be making a comeback called Atari. We're going to be talking about that, as you can see in our little display set here. We have an original Atari 2600. Look at there. 40 plus year old machine that I played on when I was a little tyke. Yeah. Um, we have 
a great information. We'll have our Mike's mesmerizing moment. We'll have our NFT and our whiskey tasting on our second hour. We have letter segments. I got some fun. I got a, I got a funny letters that, that is, I'm really excited to read about it. You can tell it was cut and pasting time for the uh, person that was sending out the spam. And so, he, oh, yeah, that's so, right. So, so you cut and paste this one. Yeah, I cut and paste a couple extra different things uh, yeah, into some... the thing. So, pretty interesting. Um, and then we're going to also have Jason Sherman, and he will be back on, and he's going to be talking about how the technology and aspects work to putting together a documentary. So, we're going to talk about, about it his first. Equipment, right? We're going to talk about what type of cameras you use, what type of software you use, what type of uh, uh, hardware that you may have, how you set up stuff. So we're really going to talk about kind of the overlay view first, and then we're going to really get into kind of the technology. So if you're interested in any film producing, any documentary producing, any... Um, Taking pictures. Uh, yeah, any any video produ- production, which essentially 90% of what people watch today is is movies and interactive type of content, twitch.tv, which we're live right now streaming. People are watching that, YouTube and, and everything. So this is really an important segment. It should be pretty fun. And then we have our story back from last week, stories you didn't know about. We're going to be talking about Sadia Nadella. I got it right. You, you sure? I, uh, yeah, I, I practiced that. Okay. Uh, from Microsoft. Uh, so we're going to get to his segment hopefully today. And then... We are going to also be giving away some prizes to our first callers today. So David is ready. We got tons of stuff to get rid of. 425-373-5527 or 188-298-5569. The very first person to call on the show today, we're going to give away the Vivomi Pulse device. We have an extra one of those that we're going to be giving away. So first person to call in again, 425-373-5527. Talk to David Brown, our engineer extraordinaire, or 188. 188- 298-5569 and get stuff ready to go. Now, Mike, we're going to go right to our loaded question of the day because I really don't care how your week was, but I do care about how you answer our loaded question. That's the okay. most important. If you could rewrite history, what time period would you focus on? You know, we would. We were talking about stuff like this before. Yeah. I would love to go back and stop the burning of the library in Alexandria. Okay. What century is that? Is that... Um, that's, uh, second century. Second century. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, not quite sure. I'm okay. not quite sure the date on that, but, uh, Why would you want to stop it? Uh, because the library in Alexandria was the repository for almost all the ancient world's knowledge. Knowledge. Yeah. And it was burned in a riot. So you'd like to go back there and then we could have all those original manuscripts? That would be, that would be something to look at. That would be something to to really, really dig your dig your heels into dig, and make a yeah, difference. Just yeah. See, I think I would go back to Roman's Empire and I tell them not to fall apart. In and I, I would say, I'm sure, guess, I'm sure that would, I'm sure that would be the only thing they would need. Just well, don't, just don't fall apart. Listen, guys, we want to keep on having Rome be really successful here. Here's what we need to do. Here's the technology <laughs> plan. I come up with my it, five step it, program, and I'd be right there. Come on, guys, this is what we need. To yeah, do. okay. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they would have listened to me. Listen, no, it, they would have yeah. thrown me in a pit with a bunch of lions. Yeah. All you, right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, that was our loaded question of the day. Um, we're going to be doing our whiskey tasting after the first break, so we're excited about that. Hopefully, we either get a zero, one, or two thumbs up for our pick of the day. And now we're going to start our episode with our top stories in the first five minutes. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. All right. Welcome to the top stories in the first five minutes. We're going to story number one. Amazon is a roaring lion sitting back on a bed looking and chilling out to some grooves. So that's, so that's kind of, I'm trying to do all the stories we're going to talk about. Okay. okay. So Amazon is a roaring lion is yeah. going to be talking about because they purchased MGF. So we're going to be talking about that. They're <laughs> okay. sitting back because they have a brand new policy on some of their uh, time off. So they're sitting back there about their tracking stuff. So they're sitting yeah. back now and they're kind of saying, oops, we made a mistake. Mm-hmm. And then they're chilling and listening to groovy tunes because they are no longer testing for marijuana. So that's we'll get right. right to that. All right. Story number one. Uh, we have our Las Vegas correspondent with some audio here talking about the breaking story. Amazon has officially signed the deal to buy movie and TV studio MGM. The price, $8.45 billion. MGM Library concludes the James Bond movie franchise, Rocky, and the TV studio that developed the Shark Tank reality series. All those properties could become exclusively available on Amazon Prime Video, this stands to be Amazon's biggest acquisition since it purchased Whole Foods Market four years ago. All right, so $8.4 billion. Essentially, they get 4,000 films 
and 1,700,000 1, hours of television programming is what they purchased. Okay. So they they want to be a little bit more competitive to Netflix. So this is going to be the big deal right now, right? They're, you're going to have you, you, everybody Netflix. They're stomping. You're, you're, that's why that's why one of our stories is about Netflix. Yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about. So MGM, you get the James Bond, Rocky, you got Twelve Angry Men, and I just can't wait to see Shark Tank coming on up with the little Amazon logo, right? That's going to be the most is interesting it, thing because Shark Tank is one of the produced shows that are a part of MGM. So that means you're going to have Kevin O'Leary there trying to get a uh, residual. Uh, uh, royalty deal for everything, and Amazon is going to have it on their streaming service. That's going to be a very interesting thing to do. Maybe Bezos will want to jump onto that. All right, so the real value okay. is the intellectual property, right? Yes. So that's what they get. They get that's the right. James Bond continuations. They get the old information they have available, and so they can then now remarket stuff as James Bond stuff and additional items to that. Now, Amazon is just so aggressively in the news this week. They have also changed their employees' policy for time off and marijuana. Yeah. Amazon announced Tuesday it supports the federal legalization of marijuana, and the company is revising its controversial workplace policy uh, that says that it will keep employees work and breakneck paces. Yeah, these are two, slowing these down. These are two different things. So they're two different. They released it on Tuesday. Both things. Yeah. So one is talking about their break time. Right. So they have a tracking system. Yeah, their system tracks how long they're on their break. Correct. And so it creates stress. For people that, while they're people, on their break. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So, and, so like back in the old days, when I used to go on a break back in my restaurant days, you had a little time card, right? You went, you punched mm -hmm. it in the time card, G -g -g -g, it comes out, you put it in the little rack, you go and you have your 15 minutes that turns to be 22 minutes. You go back in, you put it in, G -g -g -g, and then it yeah. had the correct time. So it would just keep I got, tack of that. I was a supervisor once and I got, I got called into the big boy's office and told that one of my employees had two seconds of time that he wasn't on the clock, and oh, no. I had to write him up. Oh, no. Did they really? Yeah. So that was a big deal thing. Yeah. But now what they have is they have all this tracking and cameras and everything. So when somebody goes on a break, they're not really on a break because they, no. they're being monitored and everything that they do. Amazon said that they came on out that essentially their time off policy, which is not time off from work, but time off when you're at work, uh, has been criticized, and they're going to revamp that, yeah. it to make sure that the employee doesn't feel the pressure while they're on the break. Yeah, that's bull. They knew about this when they started it. I think it's just they had a bunch of negative pressure and pressure. It's it's this it, whole it unionization it, yeah, thing I that's think really this, I think close. this is probably why it's coming back up is because of the unionization stuff. I think so, too. So Amazon is also endorsing the federal marijuana legalization bill, and they will no longer drug test upon employment in the company, no, but no, they're going to test, but they're not going to test for marijuana. There's, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to drug test, but not for marijuana. Right. Unless an incident happens and they're going to treat it the same as they would alcohol. So let's say you're they're screwing gonna up. They're going to monitor everybody that has Fritos. <laughs> so that's so, so what is going to happen is all of a sudden they start shipping packages to New York instead of uh, Seattle and they're supposed to go in there. They'll come on in and then they'll take, a, as they would do any employee, mm -hmm. take a test and see if they're either A high or if they're drunk. And if they're high or drunk, they're probably going to get written up or let go. And um, Well, but, that's, a, that's a little different nowadays. Those, those are usually referred to... Uh, counseling before that happens. Is it you normally go to yeah, like a step that, one? And, those those things fall under uh, ADA types of laws. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, we're going to go on story number two. Netflix is looking to get into video games to keep subscriptions <laughs> going. So here's our, <laughs> our flip-flop. Yeah. So we got, uh, thank you, David. So we got Amazon uh, essentially. Uh, Amazon is buying, crushing Netflix. Yeah. And Netflix is going to. So that seems like Lose everybody's out on <laughs> doing a trend with the Amazon big deal for MGM Studios. Netflix wanted to make sure they got out in the news also. So the, what they said is they are currently looking to expand, as they have done, their choose-your-own-adventure type stories. And so mm -hmm. I did the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, my wife and I watched it, and it was pretty interactive. You would say, do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? And you'd watch it, and then you'd die, and you go, oops, okay, let's restart back over I've again. I've never done that. It was pretty cool. It was actually a pretty good interactive story, and there was a good enough dialogue with it it didn't feel too cheesy but they are specifically now looking to hire someone to lead their video game industry uh job posting so if you want to be a part of netflix video <laughs> games to higher level you can start applying for that because they want to move their game subscription services yeah. as a part of the netflix offering netflix plus <laughs> netflix plus plus ne so netflix it, plus 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 plus, plus. <laughs> so 
Uh, it's going to be interesting because it's uh, these. It's just a race to keep subscribers paying yeah, for their yeah, content. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure Netflix is is really they're they're hurting. They are. I mean, as soon as as soon as Disney started streaming, man, that was a whole different war. And now you got the everybody uh, Paramount streaming. Plus. Yeah. yeah, you got Paramount so everybody Plus. Everybody streaming. Out there. Netflix doesn't have the doesn't have the studios. They don't have the yeah. They don't have the New York, they don't have the New York offices or they don't have the L A offices for studios and production. So they're kind of just trying to buy it. I think this is, the, I, yeah, I kind of feel like this is one of their last gas. We we're going to. Is there a blockbuster time? Yeah. Uh oh. I'm thinking. All right. Okay. Here we go. Last story, real quick. We have audio about this. This is called Charlie Bite Me NFT Sold. Charlie Bit Me. Or Bit Me. <laughs> Sorry. Charlie Bit Me. Ow! Ow, Charlie! Ow! <laughs> Charlie! That really hurt! Yesterday was the 14th anniversary of the uploading of this famous viral video, which has been viewed almost a billion times with a B, a billion times. But guess what? It is officially off the Internet after being auctioned off overnight as a non-fungible token or an NFT. The video, listen to this, sold for $760,999. Wow. So that's, essentially, that's more than that's more than the the disaster girl one. Yeah. So essentially, these kids. So they had the video that's been out there forever, right? And uh-huh. so essentially, they had a billion people have viewed it. They decided to remove it from all of the YouTube. They worked with YouTube to remove it from all the other streams where people reposted and commented about it. Sold it as an NFT, and all that money is going for them to go to college. Just think no of that. Kidding. Just think of that. Kids sitting on a chair. He puts a f- uh, finger in his mouth and he says, "Oh, he bits me." And they. Why are they going to college? Well, I, well <laughs> they just I, need to sit around biting their fingers. No. Well, essentially, it was originally posted because they didn't have a way to send that large video to their grandparents, yeah. as because because you couldn't back then, right? right? I mean, the internet was so slow, so they put it on YouTube, and then they said, "Hey, grandparents, go look at it," and the grandparents shared it out and shared it out and shared it out, and then it became a national phenomenon. Yeah, All right, well, non fungible tokens are here to stay, and people are paying big prices for them. You can also get a Tech Time Radio non fungible token, right. and we'll talk about that at the end of the show. We're going to go out to a commercial break. I'm Nathan Mum. We got Mike Orday here and David Brown in the studio. We're excited to come on back to our next guest, where we have uh, Jason Sherman, who has been featured on several media outlets, including The Wall Street Journal, USA Today, The Verge, ABC News. Jason is a classical trained violinist. And he was featured in the, spo- in the speaker for Fox Emmy Award winning show Exploration Earth 2050. All right. And we have a gamer time thing talking about Atari as we have the Atari console in here also. So stay tuned. We'll see you after this commercial break. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Have you heard about 180 Consulting? No. I love these guys. You know how much I avoid working with copy of vendors, right? Uh, actually, I get to hear about it all the time. Not anymore, because guess what? The guys at 180 Consulting took over the entire process. They assessed our needs, worked directly with the vendors on my behalf, and helped us understand our option. No sales fluff, just good information so we can make the right decision. Well, that sounds good. How do they get paid? Their only compensation comes from a small share of the cost savings they create. They work for us, and it's a win-win. You know, that sounds like a no-brainer. There's two ways to reach them. You can get them at info at 180-consulting.com or visit them online at www.180-consulting.com. www.180-consulting.com. Thank you, Mike. 180-consulting.com. Hi, I'm Bernadette Pager, host of an Informed Life Radio. In an age when the term misinformation is used to silence criticism and debate about COVID-19, vaccines, and more, we're bringing you doctors, lawyers, and scientists to discuss the missing information about your health and medical freedom. An Informed Life Radio airs right here on KKNW every Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. We're starting a real health revolution, one conversation at a time. Join us. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host, Nathan Bum. So the year you're looking for is 257 AD is when Alexandria's uh, yeah. uh, library was taken apart. That's that's just the type of knowledge I have when I can find it's, it. It's find Go- it on Google, the computer. Google that's, is a wonderful thing, it, isn't it? It's amazing, isn't it? Well, welcome back. Well, during our break, we were sipping some whiskey. And, and it's been a, it's been a little while since we've had a whiskey that tastes like this, hasn't it, Mike? Uh, this one was pretty good. It's a little bit. Yeah, our last two have been... 
not too well. Yeah, the last <laughs> last two are both thumbs down, right? Yeah. yeah. The the one the one three weeks ago was really bad. It was really bad. All right, so we have Edmonds Own Whiskey, eighty three proof, uh, sixty nine dollars a bottle. This is the Scratch Distillery's Edmonds Own Whiskey. Remember when we had Dan uh, Whedon on the show and he mm-hmm. talked about that whiskey? Yeah, this is it. This is exactly it. So I called them up after the show because he was saying how great it was, and I played the little clip of what we had, and they said they'd send us a bottle. So they absolutely sent us this bottle. It doesn't make any difference whether they sent it or not on how we like it or the Thank taste you, is. Don't. But it is a distilled whiskey in new American oak barrels for two years. It's a unique blend of grains sourced from the nearby Skagit Valley. Shows incredibly complex and rich and smooth balanced flavor with a little bit of a chocolate finish. So there you go. Mm. So I wouldn't want to say if it's a thumbs up or thumbs down until the end of the show, but it has a little bit better tasting than the last couple that we've had. Yeah. All right, Mike, well, let's now get into our Ask the Expert segment. This is a segment we call Ask the Experts. All right, so we have our expert that will be joining us, Jason Sherman. Uh, he is a entrepreneur ex- extraordinaire. He d- runs a web and mobile dev shop in a film studio from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he's going to be joining us today. Uh, he, has been fe- he has been featured on a whole bunch of documentary specials. Mm-hmm. So him and I had a conversation, and our conversation just continued to drift and drift and drift and drift, and we had a great time. And So we were going to talk about one thing, and we've completely changed it to talk about how to successfully produce a documentary. He's got tons of expertise information we were bouncing back and forth ideas and by the time we were done we're like okay this is like 40 minutes of great information how are we going to put it on a 10 minute segment so we have him on two segments so he's joining us the first hour then he's going to sit and uh, listen to our letters and our atari expose type of deal and then he's going to be joining us for the second hour to talk about technology so we're very excited to help him have him a part of the show jason welcome to the show hey nathan man thanks for having me here appreciate it yeah so we're so glad to be here so our first segment is going to be how to create a successful documentary. So tell us a little bit about your background in filmmaking and how you got started. Well, I originally got started. It's a crazy story. I'll keep it short. When my father retired, I created a video for his retirement party. And usually you just do a slideshow with photos. And I didn't want to do that. So I basically made a movie of his life and showed it in front of all of his friends and family. And they thought it was great. And they said, why don't you make movies? So I said, why don't I? <laughs> so I, I, you know, I got more equipment and I got better at it, started working with production companies and eventually branched out on my own and became a filmmaker. So it definitely Perfect. you know, took some time. All right. So what are some of your major influences when you first started out? Wow. You know, we're talking the old. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I got a bunch of questions here. Yeah, we're going to start out, you know, build up the story so we can create That's the great. story. So, how, yeah, so, so he, I, he's being slick. That's right. I, I, like, I, I, like I that. spent a lot of time on trying to get these questions. So I, I went to all of the, the film producing places <laughs> to ask some of the best Larry King comments that he's ever talked about. So what I was mean, your look, major influence? Gr- growing, growing up, I watched a lot of Steven Spielberg movies. So he had a, a big influence. And, uh, and then once I started to learn more about film itself, the technology behind film, I started watching Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, and, and the older movies. But uh, you know, growing up, my, my influences were were more like, you know, Woody Allen and anything that had like Eddie Murphy in it or, you know, uh, you know, Jim Carrey later on. I was like a big comedy person, but I really liked cinematography when it came to like Ridley Scott and like Steven Spielberg and eventually Christopher Nolan's style. So uh, it's for me, it, it, it started with like the slapstick and the comedy and like the visual type of film. And then it turned into more cinematography. The so, Three Stooges and that old stuff, that was really, that yeah. was a lot of work, right? They yeah. had to animate <clears throat> with the sound and effort, the same type, exaggerate mm-hmm. the comedy yeah. level. I, uh, yeah, I took I took some film classes when, when I was in college. So. Did you? I did. And, and, and did you want to be a film producer? Nope. No, you wanted, but, but you have written <laughs> I, stories. I, you though. know, what I wanted to do was special effects when I was a kid. Oh, did you ever watch that movie FX? Yes, I did. Oh, that I love that. That was a good one. That, that, that was a good movie. That was a great movie when it came so, out. That, that, it, it, yeah. It, yeah. Okay. They, but faked, I they, they, faked, they faked all the uh, accidents or something, and so it looked real, yeah. but it wasn't. 
Yep, yep, yeah. So, and then he had all the hidden in the costumes and different face masks. So that was, yeah, okay, never mind. All right. We're, we're really it. dating. We're dating ourselves. We're supposed to be more modern. Yeah, so hang no. on. So we'll be like the new I'm, 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 I'm older. Than all right. So. Okay. So what's the first step needed to begin the process of creating a documentary? So I know that you were just filming today, right? Isn't that? Yeah. You were just I, filming this? Yeah, this documentary is called Cutting Corners about real estate. So I'm out there on the streets filming live because demolitions are happening every single day and you know when they when they're demolishing a building i got to get out there with my camera and start filming them because if not the building's gone and then i, I lost my chance and so th that actually is the first thing you have to do you have to identify a, a problem or an issue in the world and for me it's these demolitions of these buildings so identifying a problem you have to find something that people are upset about or you are upset about and has it been exposed? If it hasn't been exposed, that's your angle. That's your angle. Is that okay. why you chose documentaries over other forms of film? Well, my, my first film is called the Bucks County massacre. It's actually a horror film. So my first film was not a documentary. My second film called the King's highway. That is a documentary and it kind of just fell in my lap, but I, I originally started making a feature film and then I went into a documentary. So now my third happens to be a documentary. Why? Because I identified an issue that needs to be exposed once again. So it's not because I don't want to make feature films. That's my goal. Any filmmaker wants to make feature films. But the difference being the budget is much higher on a feature film. It's much more challenging and difficult to do because it's a completely different style of filmmaking. Right. All right. So. What is one of the biggest surprises about the process uh, from an outsider to take a look about putting together a film or a documentary, or even even a short, right? Even a short little movie. What's the biggest surprise from somebody on the outside looking in? They'd be like, oh, this is really easy. Everybody thinks doing podcasts are really easy and radio is really easy too. And all oh, you just go and you sit in front of a deal and you talk and there's like tons of prep time and there's tons of of this. Was that? Thanks for just ruining my world there. Was that? <laughs> I thought everything was easy. Oh, yeah, well, you, well, you're going to come here and enjoy it. I have to. No, no. Okay. So, what well, is, I run a podcast. Yeah, I know what you do. Like. You do. What is the biggest surprise about the process from an outsider's view? I, I mean, you, you just nailed it there. I mean, everybody thinks everything is easy, right? Everything is easy. And then when they find out it's not, they don't want to do the hard work to accomplish whatever the goal is. And when it comes to filmmaking, there's a misconception that you just buy a camera and get out there and start shooting. And I've seen people do that, and the result is not great. You know, it's just like having a tool set, right? You, you can't just buy tools and immediately you know how to be a handyman. It's you just not go gonna... fix a car, right? You can still, yeah. still yeah. fix is... just some screws and yeah. boom. Yeah. This is it's also a... the contribution of Amazon and their ability to, to publish books. Everybody can publish a book now. Yeah. Exactly. So, 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 yeah. So, everybody thinks that a book publishing thing is really easy, and there's right? There's a lot of. Lot of, a lot of junk a lot out of there, junk, right? So yeah, you can go for like 19 bucks and you put it out there and you say, I'm going to sell it for 99 cents and then it's listed and now you're an author, right? That's I mean, right. I've interviewed a couple of people, not for this show, but for other aspects that we've had where they have put just junk books online and they're like, oh, this I, I, I'm an author for this, an author for that. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, that's like really crappy. It's like <laughs> you, you have misspellings on your title it, chapter yeah, and it's, it's just like, oh, I can't that. even read it. I've seen some pretty bad titles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So what's the best thing that ever happened to you while shooting any of your films? So you start out with a horror film, right? So this is, right. so is that because it was easier to do special effects? You wanted to do yep. special effects? Is that it what, was just, okay. it was low budget. It was low budget. And it was at the time, Paranormal Activity, Blair Witch Project were pretty big. So mine was similar to one of those. Okay. And it, I was able to film it in just a couple weekends. Editing, of course, took, you know, six months to a year, but able to get the actors together and the location together, it was a lot easier. When you shoot a feature film with multiple locations, multiple actors, multiple scenes and sets, I mean, we're talking a year or longer and you need a big budget, hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know. So I was able to pull off the horror for like 50 grand, a couple of weekends. It wasn't too bad. Um, what did I you found. Use, did you use local actors? Did you use some real. Yeah, name everybody. Actors? Everybody was local. I did have a celebrity in my first movie without knowing it because at the time he wasn't really well known. His name's Brian Anthony Wilson. And he he had since gone on to Silver Linings Playbook. And he's always playing the cop in a lot of big, big Hollywood productions. So he okay. actually became pretty well known. But in my film, he plays an FBI agent and or a, a, or a chief of police. And 
I didn't know he, you know, we didn't really know he was famous at the time. So okay, that was perfect. kind of, that was kind of a surprise. That was perfect. <laughs> um, so yeah. So what's the best thing that ever happened to you while shooting? Uh, yeah, any of your, so whether, whether, whether it's the horror or your, it was something that you said, wow, that's a moment that was actually very enjoyable. I'm glad that we did that. Yeah. I mean, I would have to say it was probably going to be my documentary, the King's highway, um, being able to see people relive history through the movie. I've had people that I interviewed on camera started to cry, you know, because they remembered ancestors or family members. Uh, being able to see things that nobody else had seen before. And it just kind of opened my eyes to a whole new world that people had totally forgotten about. And uh, seeing people live that through the movie was was just completely fulfilling. Perfect, perfect. All right, so so let's let's let you take over a little bit here. So kind of tell us what what if I wanted to do a documentary or I wanted to do a short movie or something like that, what are some of the key aspects I should be focusing on and and what's something that you probably have a tidbit to that I would not know about that would give me a little leg up and trying to 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 get in there? It's well, not what's, easy. What, what's <laughs> funny? Well, not only is it not easy, I mean, first of all, you need to like any other challenging project, whether it's you know building a tech startup or making music or writing a book or starting a podcast, you need to be able to dedicate a large amount of time to what you're about to do. So your mindset has to be, I'm about to put a year, two years into this project, especially movies. And believe it or not, making a documentary has nothing to do with filming at first. First, you need to become an expert in the topic that you're about to tackle. This means doing research, looking up for data analytics, looking for people who you might want to interview, looking for stories, finding a community online that supports this, this problem that you're going to expose, right? There's Facebook groups, Twitter groups, whatever. You need to find those people who are talking about this problem. Join those groups, talk to them, figure out what the actual problem is because that, that's how you'll find the call to action. You need to navigate through it. Then you want to get out there and actually start filming, right? You want to, whatever that topic is, you want to start filming it to get not only B-roll, but interview people. A lot of times I find when you interview people, you start to find out pieces of the story that you had no idea existed because you couldn't find that out in your research. You had to find out from the experts who you were interviewing. Once you start getting that in the interviews and the B-roll, B-roll is secondary footage that you put on top of the talking heads. That's what B-roll is. Then you want to start typing out a narrative, right? You don't do that right away. You wait a little while because as you're getting people talking to you, you're starting to see a story form. That's when you get out your screenwriting hands and you start typing out what you would narrate on screen because it's the only way really to to come up with a story is to hear others tell the story and then you can figure it out along the way so you so don't that's really... really key that's key i guess right because people would think that i'm going to create a documentary on x right and so i have this whole idea and i, I i'm going to be talking about this and, and that but what you're saying is have an idea about kind of a subject you want to do interview the people and then from there create your story significantly based upon the information that you're learning about in your due diligence or your fact checking. Absolutely. It's a combination of all of that. So you're doing fact checking, research, interviews, and then you're kind of starting to extrapolate what you can from all of it to craft a narrative that makes sense. Uh, because what you'll find, and this is what everybody who's listening is going to find out, if you start working on a documentary, you'll find that most of what you're listening to is not very interesting. Your job, it's not, it's, you're going to fall asleep. Your job as the filmmaker is to make it entertaining. And that's where the narrative comes in. So, you know, that's very interesting because some documentaries that I've watched, I can really get into. So there's like Netflix did some series on video games. Mm -hmm. They did some I'm series on movies, how these movies were made. And so it was very interesting because they wanted to talk about the movie, but essentially the entertaining aspect was how did Elf or uh, how did get, Elf come to to be, to be? some yeah. guy that had a script he wanted to really sell it, so he came in, and so the story around how it came to be was way more entertaining than the production problems they had and the person doing this or the person doing that. It was the story that they put together. Mm -hmm. And I see other documentaries where it's just like fact after fact after fact. Here's what we got. And then the World War did this and then it did this. And, it, and they find it to, to not be as entertaining. It's tougher to listen to. Oh, those are my favorite. Oh, those are your favorite yeah, ones? Oh, I, 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 I don't find those. Okay. That's because I'm a smarty pants. <laughs> You're smarty pants. So you like that stuff? All yeah. right. It's a fine line. It's a fine line. Um. So... How do you get recognized 
to be picked up by a larger studio after you've started working on your documentary and anything like that so that you can actually finance your film? Or how do you go about doing films? Because there's tons of films on YouTube, right? So I can go to YouTube and find anything about anything. You can just type in a word in there. And then some of these, you could see like people spent some time probably trying to put together a documentary, probably tried to be an expert on some of these subjects. But what that ended up happening is they lost interest, they couldn't get financing, so they kind of dumb it down or they just kind of post it and it doesn't get taken care of. When you're actually producing some of these stuff, how do you go about making it so that it becomes an A-rated documentary or movie or film versus something that you find on the back shelf? That's a fantastic question, and it's a loaded one because it requires a lot of different answers. But I'll, Well, we I'll... are drinking. <laughs> we are drinking. That's you're right. you're going you to go. need a couple more shots for this one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, really, the, realistically, the first thing people need to know if they're going to make a movie is that you're probably not going to get financing unless you are able to get a grant from a foundation or if you're able to raise money on Kickstarter with a trailer, which I've done before for my second movie. Or if you have friends and family who believe in your project and they want to give you money local organizations, you really got to kind of do grassroots campaigning to get money in the beginning. Studios are not going to fund you. Netflix and Amazon are not going to fund you. Hollywood studios, not going to fund you. They're they're too reliant on the franchises that they own. They're too reliant on the producers and the screenwriters that they already have on staff, the agents they work with. So you can pretty much forget about it unless your uncle works at company XYZ. So your next best thing to do is to film your documentary with your own money, your own equipment or local production companies that want to share in the revenue and the credit. And once you get it out there, your first step is to get it into film festivals. Uh, There are tons of them, right? So you have to pick and choose wisely based on which film festivals either are local to you, which ones are top name, which ones are going to be the most Uh, you know, the result will be getting distributed if you win one of them. And typically agents and distributors, they go to these film festivals. So if you are lucky enough to win one, they're going to, they're going to come to you. They're going to ask you, Hey, we saw your movie at the film festival. Do you have an agent? Do you have a distributor? If you don't have one, they'll say, would you like to sign with us? And typically they'll take a percentage of the revenue that you earn from the movie based on their distribution. And, And that's pretty much how it works. If you don't get a distributor or an agent through a film festival, there is self-publishing. You can publish it yourself on Amazon. You cannot publish it on Netflix. They have to license it from you. And it's very difficult to get into Netflix, believe it or not. It is very difficult. And I know you guys have been talking about Netflix a lot. There's something that you should notice when you watch Netflix shows and movies. Take a closer look at the quality of the films and the shows. And you'll notice they all look very similar. Mm -hmm. And it's because Netflix requires their filmmakers to use specific cameras, codecs, and and resolutions. If you Uh don't fit those specs, they will not allow you to produce a film for Netflix. So they're Mm -hmm. very kind of, you know, very closed boxed. I wonder if that'll change the more, more Amazon beats them up. I don't know. It could a little bit. Well, and you know what? I, I I would too. So now what's really exciting about this is this is almost our segments done, but all the technical aspects and questions that you have about how to put together from cameras to software to editing to all these secret tricks and everything is going to be talking about that on our second hour. So we're really excited about that. And Jason's going to be back with us to specifically talk about how to put that together because that's a good 20 minutes plus of, of information. Mm-hmm. We were talking about a bunch of items. So you got teaser number one. You got your documentary. Kind of what you need to do is you need to go to a film festival and, and win a, a, a prize. So like if you go to the Seattle International Film Festival, the SIF, you need to make sure you submit it there. Now, last question before we head out. Do you sure. submit it in like a portable hard drive you send to them? Do you send these places just the files digitally? How do you there, go about entering there's actually one? Well, there's actually websites now where you put your movie, your trailer, all the information about the cast and crew, basically the IMDb. Okay. And, and, that, and that's how you submit it now to film festivals. They want to see an online screener. You don't really do the hard drives and the DVDs through the mail anymore. You still can do that, but they totally prefer the online screener. That makes sense. All right, Jason, thank you very much for being our guest, and we'll talk to you next hour. Sounds good. All right. Jason's going to be back with us. That's very exciting to talk about in our second hour. But when we come on back from our commercial break, we got Atari. 
Have you heard of that company called Atari? Never. It's back. <laughs> it is back. And we're going to talk about what its plans to do. After 20 years of being nowhere, it is deciding to rise from the ashes. Like hey, we're going to talk about your cartridge. In there, That's right? right. We're going to talk about that to you. All right. We'll see you right after this commercial break. I'm Nathan Mum. We got Mike Day here and David Brown. Did you know that up to 12 to 15 percent of Americans grind their teeth at night while they sleep? Hmm. Yeah, it's it's called bruxism. I used to work at a sleep lab, and we used to we used to measure that, and it leads to a lot of uh, problems like headaches and destroys your teeth. It wears down the enamel, and it's just very hard on your your mouth. So every once in a while, I'll wake up, my jaw will hurt. Do you think I'm grinding my teeth at night? Yeah. Well, so how do you go about protecting this then? Uh, the number one recommended way of protecting yourself from teeth grinding is what's called a night guard, which is a custom fitted prosthetic that you put inside your mouth. It usually runs, you know, hundreds of dollars, but I know our sponsor, Smile Brilliant, can get you custom fitted night guards for as little as $45 a piece. So if you go to smilebrilliant.com and use Tech Time radio at checkout you can receive 20 percent off your complete order so visit smilebrilliant.com and use the tech time radio at checkout code all right here we go welcome back to tech time radio i'm your host nathan mum we got mike Roday here and we got our atari segment coming on up as we get into gamer time All right, we're navigating through the mover and shakers in the gaming industry and new trends all the way up to virtual reality. Welcome to Gamer Time. Atari is back with the Atari VCS. So it's not the console that you see here because that's the 2600 that you're looking at. It's a Steven Spielberg movie there, E.T. That's right. E.T. So, that's right. So we'll the talk. worst video game, game ever. ever. <laughs> so if you want to check out a documentary, <laughs> as we're talking about documentaries, you go on the Netflix and watch the documentary about, about video games video and games. E.T. Yeah, yeah, they made more cartridges than there were people in the world And they filled up the it. landfills. They did. Them. All right. So Atari is back. An interesting concept. The Atari 2600 is coming on out with a refresh called the Atari VCS. It's capable of playing more than 100 home and arcade classic Atari games because these things are like 8-bit type of deals. So oh, yeah. It would take nothing to do that. But Atari is coming on out with the idea of coming out with a 4K HDR streaming PC mm -hmm. with its own proprietary OS. So they're coming out with a console for $299 or $399, depending on the model you choose. June 15th, these consoles go on sale. Can so it stream Netflix? So it could. It actually <laughs> has the ability to do that and Google Apps. We'll be talking oh. about that. So it's pretty exciting. Um, this is different than a PS5 or an Xbox series, but essentially the new owners of Atari, because Atari went bankrupt yes. and was repurchased. Mm -hmm. um, Atari's COO, Michael Ertz, says this is offering something specifically for younger generations and older generations with this device. So it has the ability to get some PC aspects for us older people and play the games and have the same controllers. They're doing the nostalgia factor for us. For us, for the older audience. And then for the 27 and under, they're doing all the streaming audience, kind of like what you would get from a streaming service online where you can play streaming games specifically for it. This is not going to be the state-of-the-art graphics that you're going to see on an Xbox or 3 or Xbox, I was going to say Xbox 360, but that's not. A PlayStation <laughs> or an, an Xbox uh, you're 360. really showing little, your age that's today. Correct. Um, Atari's new piece of hardware will come on out there. Last one they released was 1993 Jaguar, which was a monumental flop. The Jaguar uh, that came on like out. Like the car. <laughs> yeah, so it was horrible. The company then went through multiple hands of leadership. Mm -hmm. It emerged from bankruptcy and has been on the market to socialize gaming and producing online gambling through their new devices. So this device is going to really target our oh, age here we with go. the ability to See have that? online gambling aspects of it so we can do horse racing, yeah. poker, so there you go. some there, very simple concepts. I, I, I've been trying to figure out why Atari would come in and try to compete against so, Xbox. So just think of that. If I could go play poker with you and we could go into a community event, you put $10 up, I put $10 up, and we have a couple other people and we play poker for two or three hours and they make a little bit of money on the side because you have to pay a little mm -hmm. ante, but then whoever wins gets that money. 
That'd be a pretty interesting concept, wouldn't yeah. it? And that's what they're looking at. So let's talk about what the Atari VCS has. It is $299 for their low-end model without all their joysticks. $399 is their high-end model that comes with a traditional joystick like we Look have here. We have some of the original joysticks and then a modified joystick, much like the Xbox controllers and PlayStation controllers. So it's got an analog controller based on four-button layout, so a much more advanced. Um, they essentially talked about this in 2017 and essentially have gone through three or four different uh, leadership heads to decide if they were going to produce this device or not. So they were going to come on out with it, Kickstarter. I was an early investor into it. And I essentially, I bet you were. And I essentially pulled my money out because the main guy that was doing it left the studio, and I didn't know if they were actually going to come out with it. I didn't want to get eaten with having a cost for something that mm -hmm. didn't release. So it will be available in three models. A classic wood grain walnut front, so you get to get one that looks almost exactly like this. They have a new re-imaged carbon gold finish, and then they have a all black model. So you can get traditional looking, a black model, or a nice uh, finished model. They come with HDMI output, four 3.1 USB ports, which is pretty good. That means that's the brand new standard for USB ports. The system is highly customizable and it has its own PC mode. Users are able to upgrade the hardware and customize their gaming experience on their own. So they have the hardware for the hard drive, the memory, everything is gonna be able to be interchangeable. So you're gonna be able to take apart this little Atari box slash computer and get a better hard drive, better memory, uh, even the possibility of having better video memory for higher end graphic components. So they're making it much like the original Xbox, which was all computer parts. You could hack away at that, I know, yeah. because and you could you could change that into an entertainment system. You could change it to do a bunch of different things. Um, they're opening up to that. They're using their radon graphics technology and the AMD customized processor. They have their own custom OS built for the device, but you can absolutely wipe it and load any Windows operating system or any other operating system you want into the machine itself. Uh, again, it launches June 15th. You can only buy it online, or you can go to Best Buy, Micro Center, or GameStop to get it, and they only have them available at the day of release. So we're giving you the information now, all right? So it was it, it June, June 15th. 15th, so 10 days from now. You need to make sure you get on there early. Otherwise, it'll end up probably being like one of these sold out things where you have to go to eBay and pay $500 more for it at a later time. Um, the good thing about it is that it'll come with 100 arcade home classics built into the machine. That's because it's going to take... Is it going to have uh, E.T. on it? Uh, it may have E.T. on it. And I'm <laughs> sure uh, my favorite game on the old Atari was... Uh, uh, Air Sea Battle. Did you ever play Air Sea Battle? Yeah, that was like the. Wasn't that well, the very first? It was one? like the very first the very game. First the game. Yeah, your little thing you'd shoot yeah. and guys would go up and down. And Outlaw was pretty cool too because you were like a western and you'd have to shoot through the cactus and you'd your bullets would bounce. I don't know how realistic that was back <laughs> then, but you, your bullets would bounce off a wall. Yeah, I remember. Remember uh, that? What was the driving game? I remember the driving. Game. Uh, they ha they had one that was just called Drive. That's what it, I think. That's probably what it was. It, I mean, their their names were Combat. I mean, yeah, they were so Combat. Sim so simple. They didn't, yeah. uh, Missile Command. I mean, that was like a real big one because they had to put two words on it. So I, I mean, know. They, they were all about the single and world. Then they had Pac Man. That was a super. Asteroids was my favorite. Asteroids was pretty good too. I used to flip that. I used to spend hours and hours. And you'd go you'd roll over the score, score yeah. so you go back to zero. Um, they also say Atari is working to be able to have indie favorites and AAA games, too. In April of 2021, the Atari VCS announced a handful of new titles that will be available from Game Rant. So you're going to be able to have new streaming services. So think of where, where do you get your streaming games currently right now? It's normally Steam, right? Steam. So think of Steam's platform based upon a device like this that you could easily download and play games from plus all old-timer games and a couple gambling games on there. That, that fits right into our category age of, of not having to hit 55 buttons and move around and see the special combinations and, and still enjoy some There's time. There's no fun in that. No, I don't get those new games. I don't understand how they did. <laughs> all right, well, okay. uh, we're going to end our segment. When we come on back, we still have Mike's mesmerizing moment. We have our pick of the day coming on up, so we'll be right back after this commercial break. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you heard of Unidragon? Yeah, that's the puzzle, dude. That's right. Guess what? They moved to Amazon. Yeah, I know. The owl told me. The owl told you? Yeah, it's all about the owl. Oh, the owl. <laughs> 
all the owl and unidragon told you yeah we, we we've talked about this guy before he's the he's the puzzle guy he's the puzzle guy that's correct they do of course have the owl and the owl is available for you to now get with prime free delivery awesome we've made it easier for people to find the owl yeah i know the owl told me about that too <laughs> the owl did what the owl tell you he, he told me to go on to the tech time radio website and forward slash sponsors wow the owl is just telling you everything that's correct if you go to techtimeradio.com forward slash sponsors you see our sponsor right there and it's got a link so you can immediately click and purchase unidragon off of amazon don't get fooled by fake puzzle people out there trying to sell you imitation puzzles go and find the brand you can trust unidragon.com and again go to techtimeradio.com forward slash sponsors because the owl will tell you no place better to buy it than with the tech time radio code yeah there's three sizes <laughs> there's three sizes sir there, there is uh, all right, welcome back to it's Tech Time Radio. Out. I'm your host, Nate the Mom. We got Mike Roday here and David Brown behind the board. We're excited to be getting into our Mike's mesmerizing moment. This is Mike's mesmerizing moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. <laughs> you know, we, we kind of touched on this while we were talking to Jason earlier, where everybody thinks everything's easy. They do. And that's one of the, I think that's one of the byproducts of our technological age here is that we can Google anything we want and, and get these answers, but it gives us a false sense of security and thinking that we can, that everything is just simple and easy to do, you yeah. know, and when it, when it comes to human beings, it still comes down to repetition, doing it, learning the tangentials that come with that learning and then processing it through your own system. So, you know what? We have a lot of post-editing work that goes on into the video, right? So we get our audio that comes in from David, and he does a great job with the audio here at KKNW 1150 because it's a radio station, and then we get the video and we mix it. Mm -hmm. And so I have to use like Adobe Premiere just to mix that type of stuff. And there's hours into this. And, you yeah. know, and and I look back and I'm like, is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? And there's ways you could shortcut it, but then it's not going to come out to the same product. And so I, I have a huge uh, issue with that about trying to shortcut certain s steps. I write them all down and I have a document. Yeah, I've seen them. And I want to make sure that those are done correctly. So if somebody's listening to our show for the first time, for the last time, that they're still getting the same high quality and not cut those corners. Yeah, but you're going to actually going to adapt those to yourself, and they may not mean anything to somebody else. So you're going to have your own adaptations. And that I just think it's the interesting thing is that we have all this information at our fingertips, and yeah. we we automatically are always thinking that things are so easy. And a lot of things when we start, we we like, oh, I'm going to be a podcaster. Okay, great. And then you start it, and you're like, why aren't you doing that anymore? Oh, it's too hard. <laughs> yeah, so that, it, the, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of work behind the scenes. What we see is these finished products, and we don't know that you have to spend hours with a video editor. Yep, or, yep. And running through each line or whatever you're doing, even cutting commercials. Right, our com commercials sound really funny. Well, and, yeah, I mean, we spent an average commercial that's thirty seconds here actually takes us what thirty minutes of recording yeah. because we go over the the different. Scripts, scripts of different and ideas and the play different with, things we did. Play with some of it. We're just not, well, sometimes we're just talking, but, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we have a, we have a, a production. Correct. It, it does take that time. All right. Well, we're going to now move into our pick of the day. Oh, and it's now pick our of the day pick music. of the day for our whiskey tastings. <laughs> Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right. It's Look been a that. long time since we've heard this. I know. Heard the We're on time today. Day I like yeah. that. Okay. So we have our whiskey. It is the Edmonds Own Whiskey, 83 proof, $69, Scratch mm -hmm. Distillery, Edmonds Own. What do you think? Is it a thumbs up or thumbs down? Mike, is uh, it I'm a gonna thumbs up? I'm going to give it a up? thumbs up. This is not, this is not, I think this is a nice mid-range one for me. This would be something that I would not choose right off the bat yep. as my best flavored, but this would be something I would have. Yeah. I'd mix this with something else a little bit. A little bit of a caramel syrup or something like that. For me, I'd like a little bit more sweeter. You're going to put taste. some Splenda in it? Yeah, maybe some Splenda. <laughs> I, like, I like it. It's good. Aspartate. All right, I'm going to give it a thumbs up also. 
Um, so that's two thumbs up. It's been a while since we've had that. Now let's talk about what we have coming up on our second hour. Mike, we're almost done with our show. On the second hour, we have our letter segment, reading the email scams. we got a real funny one to talk about. Cut and paste didn't work for this guy. Uh, we have a feature segment uh, that we're going to be talking about specifically uh, how to do more video editing. And then we have uh, Sadia Nadella. Boy, you, Auto, yeah, I, mean, I probably there, butchered it yeah, there. Got, so, you, from Microsoft there CEO, what you didn't know about him. I am Nathan Mum. We got David Brown behind the board. Micro Day. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube, so check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week. The views expressed on this program are those...
Yeah, what's up? Hey, our buddy from Unidragon is back. Yeah, I know. How do you know? Well, the owl told me. The owl told you. Yeah, know? he tells me everything. Yeah, we, we, we've we talked about this guy before. He's the he's the puzzle guy. He's the puzzle guy. That's correct. They do, of course, have the owl, and the owl is available for you to now get with Prime Free Delivery. Awesome. We've made it easier for people to find the owl. Yeah, I know. The owl told me about that, too. <laughs> the owl did? What did the owl tell you? He, he told me to go on to the Tech Time Radio website and forward slash sponsors. Wow. The owl is just telling you everything. Well, make sure if you're purchasing... The Unidragon from Tech Time Radio. Again, you go to techtimeradio.com forward slash sponsors. Make sure you use our special Tech Time code. You know what the code is, Mike? What's the Tech Time code? Well, on Amazon and on a purchase order through our site, use the code Tech Time. Really? Yeah, that's spelled T E C H T I M E. Wow. Hooked on Phonics worked for you, didn't it? And it's got a link so you can immediately click and purchase Unidragon off of Amazon. Don't get fooled by fake puzzle people out there trying to sell you imitation puzzles. Go and find the brand you can trust, unidragon.com. And again, go to techtimeradio.com forward slash sponsors because the owl will tell you no place better to buy it than with the Tech Time Radio code. And there's three sizes. That's right, Mike. There's three sizes. We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio, and then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn, you now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest. Keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm. Technology News of the Week. The show for the everyday common person with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. I'm Nathan Mum, and welcome to our live show on YouTube on uh, TechTimeRadio.com. You can watch the full stream, and of course, you can go to Twitch, Twitch.tv. You got it. I got it. Twitch.tv okay. and watch this also. On this hour, we're going to be giving away a, a subscription for a bag of Story Coffee. So if you're the first caller to call in. And talk with David at 425-373-5527 or 188-298-KKNW, which is 188-298-5569. Make sure you call and David will get you a list and we'll get you a bag of story coffee. The best coffee. It's in really the, good coffee, so call. In the Pacific Northwest. Forget Starbucks. Who's that guy that's in charge of that? Uh, all right. Okay. So we are live streaming from 4 to 6 p.m. on Saturdays. If you catch us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Sunday, at a different time, we're not going to be there. So. You know, everybody knows what the days of the week are, right? Well, I just like okay. going through okay. that to help everybody make sure they know. <laughs> okay. So visit us at techtimeradio.com because you'll have all the information, all the great news, information, up-to-date items. you got our blog post, which will have certain specific deals. And you can see if we liked our whiskey or didn't like our whiskey. Last hour, we actually gave two thumbs up to the Edmunds' own whiskey. So that was nice to have a good product a good whiskey. Here. It was. So our two-hour technology show that has a simple format that you do not have to geek out. On our second hour of the show, we have our letter segment reading today's 
funny email scams and funny phishing attempts sent to me during this week, all of them this week. I said that one time and then it wasn't a week. It was like two days older. So I made sure to highlight everything just this week. We got one that's probably in my top right now. It's going to be my top uh, phishing attempt yeah, this, that I got. This is a fun one. So I, somebody, somebody, yeah, somebody decided to try to, to do something, which we're going to talk about in just a bit. I got uh, one on my phone. Did you, uh, you yeah. said, I said you had to send that over to yeah, me. Yeah, I forgot to send it over oh, to you. Okay, okay. send it to me this week so I can maybe put it in there. We can put some audio back in and have a, listen, someone listen to you. It's a robot voice telling me I'm in violation of some FBI it's law. FBI law, and you're going to go to jail soon if you don't call this number right now? Yeah. Oh, I love those. Those are great. All right, so we have um, also back, we have our expert award filmmaker, publisher, author, tech startup expert and journalist Jason Sherman will be on our show. We're going to be talking about the technology items used in production and recommendation for making movies, documentaries, or any other creative product. Um, we're going to be talking about some royalty-free music, what you do for this, what you do for that. So it's going to be really techie. Uh, we had him on the first hour show, kind of highlighted of what he's going to be talking about on documentaries. Now we're going to get into the weeds and grass of all the well not next i shouldn't say weeds and grass right that's the amazon story from last hour so we we're gonna can, get, we into, can get into weeds and grass that's <laughs> fine <laughs> okay so we're gonna get into the i'm the, not a cat <laughs> we're gonna get the weeds of certain things there you go david um we need continue. to make we need to make some more things for him to do though what's that david yeah so we need to get him some new audio clips new audio. yeah we need to get him some new ones all right stories you didn't know we're gonna be talking about the ceo of microsoft uh sadia nadala i have it all done right here you, you so, you've said that name like three different ways. I have the uh, I have the Satya. So it's like S A T Y A. Yeah. So it's like Saudi, like Satya. Saudi Arabia. So that was supposed Satya. to Satya. And then it's New Nutella. Not Nutella. Not not Nutella. 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 Okay. So I got N E W D E L L for like Dell company and Just A. Slow for down the, for the phonics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'm sure this hour we're going to have some technology that'll make you go mm, and laugh with a little bit of technology. We're a two-hour show. Catch us always live Saturdays. Um, we did not get to show the NFT last episode, so we're going to oh, do it this here, episode. Let's, let's do it right now. Yes, I forgot to do that. We had a little bit of time, too. So the NFT we have is available at techtimeradio.com. If you go and click at our store, you can buy some nice logoed gear. You saw my shirt that I have here? Yeah. You got one too. I, I gave it you, to you. You did. I'm, and I haven't put it on yet. I got another shirt we're going to, we'll show you out before the show done. It's, it's a little gaming type of one. It's got our little logo in it. So I brought that too. All so right, cool. We'll talk about that. Um, and of course, you can always engage us um, by calling us on the show or hashtagging on Twitter, Tech Time Radio, and we'll read your uh, tweet on the air. All right, David Brown's ready. Mike Gorday's ready. We are going to ask our question of the day from our conversational cards from our friends at Love Shack Live on KKNW on Thursdays. Thursdays. From 1 to 2 p.m. You can catch <laughs> Stacy and Tom. Right. As they it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> So you're not going to catch them. You're not going to get them from Thursday from two or from one to two p.m. Or you can get them online. I'm sure they have a YouTube channel. They have. And yeah, they have a Facebook page. They have a. They have a website. Everything else that everybody. Else they has. have everything that everybody's got. All right, so here you go. You're up first, Mike. So you got to be quick on this. Oh, then, we, okay. then we go to David, and then we go to me. If you could wake up to breakfast in bed anywhere in the world. Where would it be? Where would it be? Not who would it be? No, 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 not who would it be? No, no, no. That's Where, a different show. Yeah, that's uh, a different show. That's a little bit is more that than the Love Shack show. Well, that's even higher than the Love Shack oh, okay. show. Those those squiggly line shows back in the eighties. Oh, <laughs> I remember those. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, where Where would I want to? I would want to wake up on a beach house somewhere in the Caribbean or the Bahamas. Okay. Um, maybe even uh, Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Somewhere tropical. Tropical. Not, not, not this. Not this. Not the position. It, it was raining today. Right. It was. Last yeah, week. I was last week. I, I, I was came riding. In. I was riding in the rain. Today. You're riding your, the, your your new motorcycle. My new motorcycle in the rain. Huh? It, yeah. That's really good for it. I bet, huh? Well, it was cold. It was cold. Okay. All right. So, so that's in the in summertime. And last week I was in shorts. In your in your in, yes, in your, your bail. I mean, I'm fully dressed up like his regular winter. Got my winter coat over there. I know. It's All right. Cool today. Which okay, is weird. David. We're going right to you next, bud. If you could wake up anywhere, where would it be? Well, I had it down to two choices, but I think I'd rather just stay tropical too. How about, you know, 
Hawaii. Yeah, no, that's mine. Oh. You can't take that. Oh. What? You, said, you, did, you did say Hawaii. You said something else. That's right. So I said say somewhere Hawaii. tropical. That includes Hawaii. You, no, no, well, you kind of no. left the United States. You, yeah, you never say anything about the United States. Yeah. No, oh, no, no, okay. no, no, no. Mr. Anti-United States guy. Is that what you are? Is that what you were trying to do? You didn't want to be in the United States anymore, huh? Well, most of the tropical places are not in the United <laughs> States, so <laughs> that's true. But, but we got Hawaii. Okay. And mine, so you're going to be surprised about this. Mine would be in... The Ivory Coast in Africa. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. You're you, not because you've been to Africa. I've been to Africa. I lived in Africa for three plus years as a child growing up. Now the question is, why the Ivory Coast in Africa? Well, see, that's where I. I so actually, it's probably incorrect. It's probably really Botswana, if I was to say it honestly, because I have friends that are there. Mm -hmm. They have a safari company that I know really well. I'd probably like to wake up there because I'd be safe. The Ivory Coast is not safe right now. But when I was a kid growing up. I lived over there for three years, and I have nothing but great memories of it. And it even the even the malaria. Even I got malaria. I got deadly sick for like three, three months, and all I ate was vanilla yogurt. So let me just tell you, I have never had vanilla yogurt again in my life. Oh, since no, I was I there. Know it to get you for your birthday. No vanilla yogurt. I will just throw up. So I that was the only thing I could keep down in my stomach. I got deadly sick there, but it was always warm. And as a boy growing up, you could go with your shorts on, no shirt hang around, play games all day. You do your school for three or four hours, and it was like the best time ever. So. See, it's all about the tropics. It was kind of nice to have that warmth there, right? Especially when you wake up today and it's raining and, and you walk outside and you're trying to print out your uh, script for the day and it gets water in it and you have to throw it away and get another thing. And so, yeah. Where are you? Where is your printer? My printer was outside <laughs> my office, my remote office. So okay. I walked outside. I ran out of paper. Oh, okay. So I walked outside <laughs> the first time. It. It, and all my paper got wet. So then I got all mad and I go recycle it because I'm a nice guy. I didn't throw it away. So I recycle it. And then, and then what happens, I go back in. So then I got a whole towel over the yeah, top. Yeah, it wasn't of it, really so. a good day for not getting wet, I guess. It was Because uh, I, I was trying to avoid the rain in my new motorcycle. And you got to be careful. Ended up, People ended up right in the middle of a storm. Yeah, that's not right. Yeah, you got to be careful, dude. People don't know how to handle motorcycles. So you got to be careful in the Pacific Northwest, man. Oh, yeah, I know. We don't know how to drive yeah, in, I, I, in sun, I almost get, rain, I almost snow. get wrecked into all the time. Yeah, okay. All right, so there we go. All right, let's move into our first segment. We call this Letters. All right. <laughs> you, you, you like that music, don't you? Yeah, all right, here we go. Uh, from FS360. Is this, is this the one? Nope, not yet. Oh, okay. FS360, this FMD pool at Merle, M-E-R-R-E-L-L dot P-L. Okay, but it's from F360. Mm -hmm. Your 2021 TransUnion trans Equifax and Experian credit scores need to be improved. Okay. Click here for more information on how uh -huh. to improve it. So you click here, right? So you right. click on those. This was sent Wednesday, June 2nd at 1.51 p.m. to Nathan Mum at Hotmail.com. Oh, I just put my email out there. There you go. Boy, you Nathan did. Nathan Mum at Hotmail. Now you you're going to get a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I can get it. So you can send me Nathan Mum at Hotmail.com, and I'll just, I got a gazillion and a half filter, so I'll just delete you too. Um, so check your TransUnion Equifax experience score. Gives you a link. First thing you click on the link it does, it asks for your name. Okay. Asks for your birth date. Okay. Asks for your address. Okay. And then asks for your social security. Number. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so that's the one. So uh, if you put them in, so I put in a fake social security. I actually went through this whole test, uh -huh. put in a fake social security number. Then it comes on up and says, Alert, we have found bad credit on your account. We cannot improve your score. Please call us. Okay. So then they, they gave a. A one eight eight number, so it wasn't mm -hmm. a one eight hundred, but essentially a free call. So I called the number, the one eight eight number, called it and said, "Oh, because I, I like doing." Was this things. a live person you talked to? So, so, I, so the first person I got said, "Oh, please wait. We are concerned about you. We understand." So it was like a voice recording, and then all of a sudden you hear a click, mm -hmm. and then it comes up with somebody with a heavy accent, and says, "Hello, I'm here to help you out." And I'm like, "Okay, uh, wh wh how can you help me?" Well, I need your name, social security number, and any credit card that we have so we can check your history. Oh, wow. On it. So they had now. Boy, that's my, pretty good. Yeah, so so they wanted to check my credit because it's a credit report. So they wanted to, so, so any credit card issues that I had, they I would give the credit card. So I gave them social security, I gave them my name and all that. And 
And then I, I gave them both a fake credit card and a fake thing. He said, oh, hang on just for a second. And then, so then he realized that I was scamming him. <laughs> and no. then the guy swears at me on the phone. I know. What I, the I, heck? No, no, no. I, no, dude, I, I know. They get so mad at you and try to make it about you. So all of a sudden he starts, he dropped f bomb and profanities and all this yeah. stuff right at me, and I'm like, dude, you're the one trying to scam me for money. What the heck are you swearing at me for? I know. Slams the phone down, end the call. So yeah, guess what? I didn't get my 2021 Trans Union Equifax scores increased. Oh, I know. So what is this taking advantage of? Um, this is taking advantage of social engineering of getting your information that well, you have right. This is making you afraid. Because, and here's the thing, this, the interesting thing about this is this is a false fear. Yep. Right? So we, we live and die by credit scores these days because we've been taught that this is how we get along in the, in the financial world. Yep. So this type of thing takes advantage of that fear that we've been given because of the socialization that we have in this modern society. They're taking advantage of your fear. They're trying to get you the information that you need, uh, that you are not supposed to be sharing in order, and they're going to do what with it? They're going to... Then immediately try to use my credit card and make a purchase. Right. Yep. All and, right. Or, or drop F-bombs at you for calling them out for yeah, being fake. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. Story number two, I got three of these. Three is the big, the big boy. Story number two, I got an email from admin service. Uh, at D-I-N-A-S-T-R-A-T at hotmail.com. Uh, email notification, Microsoft account information. Starting on June 7th, 2021, customers that have yet to update their account will no longer be able to log on to the recent security upgrade. Spelled wrong again. Please follow the link below to report your account. So I don't know if I'm supposed to report it. And there's a link that says update.email. When you click on that link itself, it did only information saying we have now alerted Microsoft, which essentially they were searching for to make sure that that email account that they sent so me this to. Is, yeah, this is just an email check. Just an email check and that I probably have a Microsoft application because it says Microsoft account info. So they can put me on a list of this email is legit and somebody will answer. And if you send Microsoft related items to it, they're going to respond. Okay. So, so before we get into this awesome one. Yeah. What are the things that we're looking at for somebody who for somebody who doesn't really understand these types of things and needs to understand these types of things? Somebody that's going to be more careful about their clicking on links. What's what's the first thing that we need to look at? Never click on any link in an email. Never click never on click on it. Never ever click on a link in an email. If they say that there's something wrong with your like PayPal account or your checking account or anything like that go directly to amazon.com my bank's chase go to chase.com go to paypal.com type in the email address log into your account and see if there's an alert there okay so if there's an alert there in your account then deal with it but never click on a link in any email even if it is a legitimate one forget it they're still going to have that information available normally in your portal when you log into something and it will tell you the same information so and this is this is how they they get you to click on that link is by Did you know that when when you have a fear response it basically takes away your ability to think constructively or critically does it? And that's what they're doing. That's what they're trying to do. They're but, trying to get you to just automatically go and click that link cuz that is their clear solution to your fear that they've just generated with this BS nonsense that they gave you. Well, here's the best one. So I this, love this one. So this is this is golden. Sent to Nathan Mum at Hotmail. Okay, so there you go. Search for low rates. This is from apply.amerasave.com offer. And the email address is news at memorynear.com. Okay. So a little bit. So search for low rates. Lower your mortgage payment rates with historical lows that you'll regret that you'll never regret the money. You calculate the savings, a new rate, no social security or hard credit pull required or pre-qualification. Click on this link right now so that we can engage you with Amerisafe. While clicking on the link, if you click on the link here, it doesn't work. So okay. it's bad, bad link, <laughs> the, so it doesn't, link work. doesn't work. Um, then underneath there it says, while social security number and hard credit pull are not typically required in order to review your available mortgage rate and get pre-qualified, if you choose to continue and submit a loan application, Amerisafe will ask for this information on your credit report. Click on this link here 
to fast track your process now. That okay. link works. That it, link, sends, okay. it gets sent to something. Underneath that, hey, two college girls really want to meet with you. <laughs> Choose your gal now. <laughs> Don't wait. Now is the time. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so, so clearly, cut and paste didn't. Yeah, quite somebody, work. somebody was a little off on the cut and paste. So, there. cut and wait is that now? Let me just tell you. Don't wait. The time is now. Choose your guest. So there's no link to. Click this is on. a mortgage, a mortgage dating site. Well, <laughs> hang on, it gets even better. So, so then, so it's like, okay, well, okay, great. I was there's two college girls that are going to help me with my social security <laughs> loan that I'm going to yeah. get taken care of, right? Okay. After that, call for a free quote. One eight six six four twelve lawn. You're all expert lawn care, 50% off my oh, wow. green resources. Are they going to send the girls over to take care of the lawn? <laughs> so essentially, in this spam email, I got a mortgage rate available to me. I got college girls available to me and lawn care. That's, now, when I click on the that's lawn a really that's a really good package deal. Now, when I click on the lawn care for the local experts, your number one America, your America's number one quote, you click, click, when you click on the link, it essentially goes back to the same link that they have for the mortgage rate. So if I'm trying to get a great lawn service, I can't because it goes to my uh, pre-qualification shortcut where I can put my social That's security hilarious. number and information. So there you go. Keep so, your dating sites and lawn care sites separate. And, and your mortgage sites. If you're going to cut and paste, make sure that you're doing a much better job. That's awesome. Whoever paid for those uh, phishing attempts got uh, an extra dose of... Uh, that, different items well, that he's were available. Trying, he's just trying to get everybody. So he's, he's trying like, to get it. It's like, oh, you know what? I don't have a, more, I, a mortgage, oh, but I can well, do maybe, this. Maybe you want to date some college girls. <laughs> That's right. All right. Dude, uh, don't get me started about my email. I <laughs> hate my email. <laughs> there you go. All right. We're going to take a commercial break. When we come on back, we got our expert here. We're going to be talking with Jason Sherman. We're going to be talking all about how we can have a successful production of a documentary or a movie. Upper Left Corner is a PNW true crime podcast now streaming on all major podcast platforms. If you get excited when your favorite true crime podcast tells a story about a place that you've been to or the town that you live in, then Upper Left Corner podcast is for you. Each week, I tell you a story of a crime that has taken place in the PNW and give you background about the town the crime occurred in. If you like true crime, check out Upper Left Corner podcast now available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and more. Ace Hardware is a helpful place with prompt, friendly service, knowledge, and the little things that make a big difference. Service. Selection. Advice. Community involvement. Competitive prices. Convenience. Located near you. And the things you need, such as... House keys. Lawn and garden. Plumbing. Electrical. Hardware. Grills. Outdoor living supplies. And even nuts and bolts. When you visit Ace Hardware, you'll be greeted at the door and given the help you need. So come visit us at Ace Hardware in Evergreen Way in Everett, Lake Stevens, and now Stanley. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mom. If you want to join the show, you can always uh, go to Twitter right now, put a hashtag Tech Time Radio, and you can put a comment in there. We may even call you up or read your comment on the air. So we're going to move right now into our next segment, which we call Ask the Expert. This is a segment we call Ask the Experts. <laughs> All right, we got Jason Sherman back. Jason is a successful entrepreneur, award-winning filmmaker, published author, tech startup expert, and journalist. He has been featured on several media outlets, including the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, um, The Verge, ABC News. Jason is a classical trained violinist and is a featured speaker on Fox Emmy award-winning show, Exploration Earth 2050. Jason, welcome back to the show. He's got his tech stuff. He's got his tech stuff ready to go. He's got his camera. He's got a, an iPhone ready to go. He's, he's got there everything. So tools and technology behind making a great film for production. Now, there are seven stages in considering a full production film. There's pre-production, which is the phase where you narrow down options for the production. Production, principal photography, wrapped, post-production, and distribution. So all of those make a successful film. And we're first going to talk about the most important, which is pre-production. The process of documenting, creating scripts, and creating your ideas. All right, Jason. So tell me about that. What do you use to create your scripts? Uh, my scripts, uh, I use a, a program called Final Draft, which okay. is pretty pretty much the industry standard uh, script writing software. Some people can maybe use Google Docs or Microsoft Word, and there's 
a couple other screenwriting software programs out there that I've heard of. But Scrivener. Scrivener, yeah. And there's and there's other ones. Studio too, Binder. I, I've used I tried to use Studio Binder. So this is what I've tried. Studio Binder, Writer Duet, Movie yep. Magic Screenwriter. There's and so then you know what I've do you know what I ended up doing? Microsoft, Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word. The... But here's the thing: when you use the when you use Word or Google Docs, it doesn't give you the formatting that you need, right? Correct. And that's the pro and that's the big challenge. So, look, I, I learned on Final Draft, okay. and it's the Hollywood industry standard. It has been for decades, so that's what I use because it is the best, at least in my opinion. And 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 is that a annual cost for Final Draft, or is it a one time purchase? I I, I... I don't know because I have yeah, not you, used it. You just buy the software. It's cheap. It's not. It's like less than a hundred bucks. You buy okay. it once, and I bought it years ago, so I got like free updates. And is it a client-based software or is it a web-based software? Um, I believe now they might have it on the web. Um, I have the one where you install it onto your computer. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Because that's the most important. Now, let me. I, I'm going to shortchange you here a little bit yeah, sure. and ask you: Is this the same pre-production software that you use? as a later stage in your production when you have to have your camera crews going out or do you use something else? Because there seems to be this whole pre-production software. Then there's this mid-shoot production software that people use. And then there's even some post-production software with actors and some other type of stuff to put the storylines together. Do you use Final Draft? You said Final Draft, right? Final, mm -hmm. Final Draft, yeah. Yes. If Final Cut Pro is the editing software. Um, and okay. I don't use I don't use that. I have Sony Vegas Pro here behind me. But you know the question you're asking it it actually relates more to a more hands on approach to screenwriting. Most screenwriters and like most of the screenplays that I've written are called spec scripts. So you don't include any cameras, you don't include any transitions, any director's comments, or any kind of like um, you know stylistic approaches to the script. It's a bare bones approach, and that's what most screenwriters write the spec script because. They want to get sold to a producer who then gets a director and actors to put their style onto it. Now, if you're going to get into the nitty gritty stuff and you want to still put, you want to put in transitions, um, camera movements and, and things like that, you can still do that in final draft. You can do it in any software. It doesn't really matter. You're just typing it in. Uh, there are color codes that you can use in final draft. So say you want to do like a camera movement, you can assign like pink to that. If you want to do it, an actor movement or like, you know, pacing, you know, or, or marks, you can do like yellow or orange for that, whatever you want to do. So you can do color codes. You can, you can do that. You can type it all in. You can emphasize things with bold caps. If you have to, when you're, when you're writing a script as a director, you can write whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> it's what it's when you're writing a spec script, you got to do everything by the, by the book. Gotcha. All right. So let me, so now let me talk about on the pre-production side. Do you do music selection at this time or do you do music selection at a different uh, process in this uh, area. Yeah, music's pretty much last. Uh, okay, I so I'm right. not going to ask you that question then. I'll come back to that one then on the yeah. music royalty. So that's a little different because when I do my radio show, I do my audio clips and my music as a part of the first step. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. That's my first step that I get those concept ideas and then I write my stories and my segments based upon that. So I, I, maybe I should change that. Why? Well, well, no, don't don't break it. It works. It's not, yeah, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I, I didn't know that. All right, so, um, so now let's. Okay, so pre-production. Is there anything else that you need besides writing that script or those tools to put it in place before you move into the next step, which would be kind of production, or is there any other software allocations or any other planning items that need to be done so that you can make sure you're ready to go? Yeah, I mean, the only software I really use is the video editing software, of course, audio editing software, which is typically either SoundForge or Audacity. Uh, those are really the only ones you need. I mean, you have to have some type of other smaller things like maybe a leveler, equalization, things like that. But we're getting really technical here. Um, I think if you have like one video editor and one audio editor, uh, for me, it's Sony Vegas Pro and Audacity. Now, I used to use Adobe Premiere. I used to use Final Cut Pro. I've made movies in both. I just prefer the ease of use and the plethora of features that you get with Sony Vegas Pro. It's, it just makes your life so much easier. And it has, you know, live rendering. So I can just watch the movie live wherever, whenever I want. Whereas other vi video programs, you have to render it out before you watch it, which is really frustrating. 
It is, and that's what I have to do with my Adobe Premiere. Because it doesn't do live editing on a lot of my stuff. If I could do some HD stuff, I have to wait for a ting code. I have nope. to wait for embed. And How then, long does that take? Sometimes that takes like 45 it, minutes. Yeah, to, it takes a long time. <laughs> yeah, 45 minutes. My wife, because I she has a preschool, and she has some kids that are staying home at COVID. So mm -hmm. I do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I do an hour deal for her people that are streaming, and I do a way better than any preschool would ever get. So let me just tell you that. We got intro you music need, and we need got a back pat there. Well, I do, I do, I do. There you go. Thank <laughs> you, David. David. There you go. David's, David's patting my back. Patting there he, back. He is. <laughs> but but it takes so long for me to get the video files and render them in. It takes about forty five minutes just to render the videos into the yeah, software. And this is Adobe, so it's supposed to be like the I best. Know. And then after that, then when I'm done editing it, then I have to export it out. So that's another Shoosh. forty five yeah. 45 minutes to an hour. So it's like two hours and just And there's waiting. nothing worse than getting that final thing and looking at it and, and realizing you need to re-edit I, like I for, forgot to put the new date in it. Yeah. So I'll re-render a whole show I have just to go back if I didn't have the right date in it. And then oh. it's just, oh, yeah. yeah just, okay. Yeah, try, All right. Try, so, try that with a feature-length film that's an hour and a half long, and it takes 24 hours to render, and you have to change one thing. Yeah, that's no. that's that's, that's hard. <laughs> so so you use so you use Sony Vegas is what yep. you use, right? And best, so best program. it's the best program. Is it easy to use? So so let's say someone's super out there. Easy. You said it was easy. Okay, super, super easy. easy to use. I super know what easy. you're going to be doing when you get home tonight. A caveman, <laughs> a caveman can use it. Well, <laughs> and Nathan so can use it. So I, you know what? <laughs> so I I so here's so I I have a list of all the stuff that I have used. So I have used. Uh, Adobe Premiere. I've used. Um, let's see. I've used Video Pad. I've used Final Cut. I've okay. used iMovie. I've used End Crawl, and so I've used all of those. And my favorite one of all of these, but it doesn't do all the things I want it to do, is the this Video Pad thing. I paid nineteen dollars for it, so it's like kind of one of these freeware slash mm -hmm. a little bit more, which was easier to use. I could cut and and the Adobe takes forever, but it has this merge feature, which I don't know. Maybe the the Sony Vegas does with the different audio channels that you where they probably, can merge. You would probably it. like it. See, that's actually a good point. Um, it's hard to see, but all the audio underneath here. One of, one of the things I really like about Sony Vegas is it's Sony, right? And Sony is known for audio, so they have this amazing audio editor built in, which is basically SoundForge, Sony SoundForge, and. I mean, that's one of the things I love about this program is the ease of use of the audio features, the audio editing, as well as the video features. Everything's built in. Like a lot of audio, a lot of audio and video stuff, you have to do it yourself in like Premiere or Final Cut. You have to build transitions. You have to build yep. text. You have to build things. Well, yep. not, not in Vegas. It's plug and play. It's drag and drop. It's really, it just makes editing fun. You know what I mean? There you uh, you know, I, and, uh, I next it. week, next week, it's going to be all about the Vegas. Uh, you know what I am. Sony Vegas. I, already, I know. I, I already know you. Yeah, it's, 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 so he's that. already put. He's put it. He's put a stamp of approval on it. You've, you've already. You've oh, pre-bought this. I, have, I know you I have. have. I, absolutely. So I, I need to do this. So so let's talk about the audio editing software because yeah. there's Audacity, which is free. Free. Right? That's yep, a good yep. one, and, and I, it works I would, really good. I would just recommend Audacity to be honest with you because it really does everything you need. You have to cancel out the noise, which is number one. When you interview somebody, you have to cancel out the noise. It does that very easily. You want to do some equalization, whether it's a treble boost or a bass boost. You want to do some kind of compression and hard limiting so that it's not hitting peaks. I mean, Audacity has all of it in there and it's all pre, you know, there's filters. It's just, you know, these features that are already in there. So why get some expensive program when you don't need to? And unless, and, and, that, and that goes into the, uh, the equipment. Once we get into the equipment, I'm going to talk about how you really don't need expensive equipment to make a movie. That's a misconception as well. You don't need a $50,000 red camera. You don't need, you know, a, a five. Oh, hang on, don't, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it yet. Don't, don't, spoil, don't spoil it. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you use Audacity? Because that's what I use with my, my. So, so I tried Audacity and I didn't get it to work well. And so I've been using GarageBand, oh, and okay. then this Video Pad, the, again, this freeware nineteen forty nine dollar whatever kind of software. They have a video and slash its own little audio type of deal, and it will remove background noise and audio levels just by clicking on it. So I probably need to spend some more time in Audacity to learn those things because this other software just did it really quickly for me. And then I do I do my own audio tracks and then I bring in the audio and I merge it with the video to make sure that it all works so that you get the clearest of, of items because 
the people that where they have a cordless wireless mic and they never turn the volume up all the way or they never <laughs> have it right. So it's always a different audio level. Each time they go to three different segments, they got their little crafts, they got their circle time, and they got their reading of the book, never the same audio level. So I always mm-hmm. have to adjust it to try to keep it type of once deal. You get, but, once, you, once you get to hang Audacity, you'll realize it really is the best and easiest program to use. It, it's very simple. There's really nothing to it. And you'll find YouTube tutorials all over the place. See yeah. that that's that's that was what helps. We have, we have a question here: Is do okay. you use Vegas Pro or Vegas Pro Suite? Well, that's I a great use, question. Uh, Ve- Vegas Pro Suite. Vegas Pro Suite. Okay. But I also have, but I also have Pro installed. I use both. Okay. It depends like, on what I'm. It depends what I'm doing, really. So what's the difference between the Pro Suite and the Vegas Pro? You get a lot more stuff. I mean, it's it's more plugins. The plugins are really. One of the things about any video editing program is plugins. It yep. makes your life better. For example, there's uh, there's Bars Continuum, which is a really popular plugin suite that you get like 50 different filters and transitions and effects that you would see in Hollywood feature films. And instead of having to create all of that using you know color coding and, and all sorts of other kinds of things, Bars Continuum, you just drag and drop something on there and it does the Hollywood look for you or whatever you're looking for. So you're, uh, you're going to get sweet. I, yeah. I'm probably going to get yeah. sweet. Hey, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. That's the same. That's the You'll, same thing as plus. You get a lot yeah. more, a lot more bang for your buck with that. Right. Now, do you have Adobe? Can now I bring my Adobe After Effects that I've spent all this time trying to make so that it looks yes. really nice? Can I bring those into the suite also? Yeah. So all you do is render them out as AVIs, yep. including the including the alpha channel, and then when you bring it to Sony Vegas, you just add the you know you click on the alpha channel so it removes it. And then the background will be blank, and then you can add whatever you want behind it. Perfect. And that, because most people are doing the green screen stuff. All right, so we talked a little bit about music, so let's, let's go right here. Royalty-free music, right? There's uh, Epidemic Sound, there's Soundstrip, there's Audio Blocks, there's Artist AI, there's Premium Beat, there's Song Freedom, Artist there's, IO. There's, there's a gazillion. Keyboards. There's MIDI, There's MIDI keyboards. keyboards. So how That's, do you go about getting you need, music? You need to get yourself a MIDI keyboard and forget all that noise. <laughs> 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 and make the music yourself and stop paying royalties. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. His, his wife's going to get mad at you. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not good at a keyboard. So I'm not, I was good at trumpet and bands. I got, you. But that, I got you. So what would you do? So so you're saying that for your music, and we talked right. a little bit about he's gonna, this. He's going to hit the Pasa Nova so, so, so for this movie right behind me, Cutting Corners, that I'm working on, the first section of the movie i created the song which is the first song in the entire movie okay so uh, i have a composer who's also going to create music and he's going to make music for the movie as well but there are also moments where i might purchase a royalty-free song i mean both of my past movies i purchased royalty-free music and i found bands or musicians who had the type of music i was looking for and they gave me a large chunk of a repository of their albums, for example, so that I didn't have to kind of look around for a lot of different music. I could just use all the music that they had in their albums. So that's something you should also try to do is try to find a, you know, an album or a group you know, that has a lot of the music you're looking for in the particular style so that you don't have to like look for a lot of music because it's hard to find the kind of music you're looking for. You have to kind of go to a lot of websites, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, your, your movie, that. I've done that. Your right. movie, you're just going to call up Enya so you can have all that. Yeah, there you that, go. That, that oh, music man. that's available. <laughs> the, all that. Whoa. Okay. I, I, I got an, I got an uh, artist to do that for me once for one of my projects. Oh, really? To give me some, some original music. So I had to go online to Fiverr, Fever, Fiverr. Fiverr. Or fi- yeah, and have somebody do it for me because I'm just not that talented. Fever is a whole different thing. Is that a different thing? Yeah, yeah, that's a whole <laughs> Fiverr, sorry. Okay. All right, well, we're going to go to commercial break. When we come on back, here's my question. What is the best camera? Don't tell us now. What is the best camera to use to produce HD quality 2K slash 4K slash industry standards for all of us to have? And we'll see you right after this break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. 
Hi, this is Lisa Downs, host of Reigniting You, a new show here on KKNW that explores a variety of topics and timely issues for making mid to late career transitions. I'll be here every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock bringing you guest interviews, career transition advice, and great stories to guide you to what's next in your career and life. Gain a renewed sense of purpose for your next phase with a positive, forward-looking approach. Get ready to be re-energized, recharged, and reignited Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host, Nathan Mum. We got Mike Ray here, David Brown behind the board, and we have Jason that is helping us understand how to produce a documentary or movie with technology. And the question we left to the break was, what type of hardware should I use to produce my films? So, Jason, we're coming right back to you. What was your number one recommendation? Is it is that is that an iPhone? Looks like there? an iPhone. This is a DJI Pocket connected okay. connected to an iPhone as the screen. Okay. It's a, it's a smooth gimbal, so it moves very smooth. It does slow motion, but the camera is actually this little guy, and it's it's it, believe it or not, this shoots in 4K, and I use it for all my B roll. But of course, when you plug an iPhone into it, then you get the big screen, and it makes your life a lot easier. And uh, I, I recommend a DJI Pocket or any kind of gimbal um, device as your B-roll, your secondary camera. And always, always use uh, an ND filter. An ND filter is one of the most important things because it'll, it'll, cut, all the, uh, it'll cut all the sunlight from hitting the lens and it makes it look crisp and clean and you get lens flares. So ND filters for any any of your your cameras are are very important to to use. I also um, use that the, the ND filter on my drone uh, my drone camera, so it's it's built in there as well. Um, DJI is also you know what I use for my drone camera as well. That shoots in 4K. Whenever you can shoot in 4K, you should. It's not just the quality of the camera or the resolution that matters as much as when you get 4K. You can zoom in in post production because you get that double. You know, you're getting 4,000 pixels versus 1080p, 1920. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility. So when I'm shooting a drone shot, a drone shot of like a, a building, and I'm far away, I can zoom in either slowly or quickly, and it looks really cool. Um, but when it so comes your iPhone, so is it iPhone 10? What, what what type of iPhone do you need to have to get the gimbal and, and the filter on it? What's your minimum? Well, that, that doesn't really matter so much. I mean, what I'm using right now to talk to you guys is an iPhone 11 Pro. Um, okay. and, then, and then I have uh, these moment lenses that um, go onto the back of the camera. These are expensive lenses. These are not cheap lenses. These are, you know, about 100 bucks a piece. But they'll do, um, you know, wide angle or telephoto and also anamorphic, which stretches it out and gives it the nice blue lens flare you see in a lot of movies. So the moment lenses are really good with, with the iPhones. When it comes to the gimbal, I'm just using an iPhone, um, an iPhone SE, just a standard iPhone. That doesn't matter because I'm using it more for the screen, you know, to see what I'm what I'm looking at. Uh, now, in terms of what camera I use to shoot the majority of my movies, um, now you asked what the best camera is. I mean, obviously there's red cameras. There's a big fight between Canon C100, Canon C300s, and then the Sony FS series, which a lot of people like. There's also Panasonic cameras that do really well. Nikon cameras. I mean, you can really go with any camera because again, it's not about the camera. It's about how you use it. A okay. camera is just a tool. So I personally use the Canon, and this is outdated by the way, but I use a Canon 5D Mark III. This is a Canon 5D Mark III. This is a 135 millimeter lens, which means this gets this, this gets out there uh, you know, pretty far if I need to. But every filmmaker should have what's called a prime lens. This is not zoomable, it's very small which means when you're filming someone up close with that, with that lens on there, it's a really high depth of field, which means very blurry behind them. So you definitely want to use a prime lens for interviews. This is more for when you're out there shooting, uh, you know, re real footage that you need to capture, whether it's far away or not. And there's a lot of other lenses you can add onto a camera like this. I just have a couple that I'm showing you here. Um, but of so, course, so how much B-roll do you shoot? So if you're doing a film like this and you're saying, a lot. I got the... So is it like two to one ratio versus your primary stuff? Or how much would you shoot on that iPhone as a B-roll type of deal? 
Yeah, and and the iPhone doesn't actually do the shooting. It's more it's more the the uh, the pocket and the the drone. But I also shoot a lot of B. Don't don't get don't get it completely um, twisted. I do shoot a lot of B roll with with the standard camera too, because you get a lot of beautiful artistic depths of field with a camera like this. Okay. Um, but uh, when it comes to B roll, it's going to be a large majority of the film. Because, you know, you can't just keep showing people talking on camera and you can't show the narrator talking because what are you going to show him talking into a microphone? So right. everything the person is saying on screen, you have to show. And it's very difficult. And it's very time consuming, but you need to shoot. I'd say a, a documentary is probably 80 percent B-roll. That makes sense. So let me right. ask you a question. Are you going to become you... a documentary in there, buddy? No, I don't know. No. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just learning. I just, you know, I like learning, right? Oh, so, man. so let me ask you: Would you ever rent any gear from like Lens Rental or ShareGrid? These are companies that have like production items that you can rent from. Would you ever rent from any of those? I see them all the time in some advertisements, and I don't know if I would ever rent gear from somebody. I'd be like, man, I could just buy it someplace. So, so would you ever rent gear? So that's the thing. What you just said. I mean, look. For example, I needed a, a wireless microphone, right? So I went and bought the Sennheiser wireless mic kit because renting it was going to cost me whatever, 100, 200 bucks. I went online, I paid maybe 300 bucks and I bought the, the whole kit. I own it. Renting, I've never rented, but I've heard of people renting and then they had to you know, pay a lot of money for it, but then they had to return it and then they needed it again and, they, and, they, and the place was closed or it was out of stock. Why would you do that to yourself? When you're a filmmaker, you need to be ready to get your camera and go film on the drop of a dime. A lot of times it's guerrilla tactics. I mean, you got a you got a running gun, right? So you can't rely on driving to the place, renting it, and then maybe it's out of stock because someone else rented it, or you don't have the money to rent it. Save the money you have to buy whatever equipment you need piece by piece. Don't buy it all at once. Buy peep, buy a camera, then buy a tripod, and then buy a wireless mic, and then buy a drone. Buy a piece by piece. Maybe you, what you, you can do is what I did when I started out, is get jobs as a videographer to fund your operation, right? And every gotcha. time you did a job, make 500 bucks or whatever, buy the next piece. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That makes sense. All right. Last question for you here. What is the most important aspect, the wrap, the post-production, or the distribution to get your movie uh, made and, and, and out there for people to use? I mean, I, that's, that's a pretty easy answer. I think it's gonna be post-production. What I'm doing, I'm sitting here editing this film now. I mean, the process of post-production is taking me months and months and months. I mean, distribution is relatively easy if you have a good film, right? Uh, filming it is also, I want to say easy, probably easy as well because you're just out there filming. It's fun too. Post-production is intricately detailed, very difficult, time-consuming, tedious, and it's frame by frame. You got to get it right. So, I mean, yeah, post-production. Would you call it dredge job. work? Yeah. Yeah, man, it's definitely – look, I, I've gotten it to a point where I, I've learned to enjoy it because I'm creating something out of nothing. And what I'm creating, I realize people are going to be watching it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Jason, we want to thank you very much for your time today. How can people learn more or get in contact with you? Easiest way is my website, jasonsherman.org. They can learn all about all the different things that I do. And also they can check out cuttingcornersfilm.com, which is the current documentary I'm working on. Perfect. Thank you very much for joining our show. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Appreciate it, guys. All right. We're going to head out to a commercial break. When we come on back, we got our final segment, and we're going to be talking about the Microsoft CEO and stories you didn't know. I'm Nathan Mum. We got Mike Day here. Uh, <laughs> I have it. Sate Nudella. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there you go. All right. We'll see you guys after the break. Hello, Seattle. How would you like to have immediate and easy access to your live EKG and heart rate data? Your data right at your fingertips and with no need to hook up wires and leads or be strapped to a machine at the doctor's office. The new Pulse device from Vivomi continuously tracks your EKG and displays this data on your mobile phone. Have you ever wondered how your EKG and heart rate behaves when you're exercising at the gym, navigating the stressful demands of the workday, or just getting the kids ready for school or relaxing at home? The Pulse is a different kind of wearable, and you can experience this difference by going to www.vivomi.com and ordering your device today. Hey honey, did you hear what I heard? 
Hmm, what's that, babe? I heard Mike over there at Tech Time Radio. He's he's like battling the he's or he's in the like that the, you know the, the swimming with the sharks in that singles arena, if you will. You know? Oh, bless his heart. Oh. And I also heard like you did that maybe things aren't going so great. You know what he needs, babe? I think he needs to spend a little time in Love Shack. Yeah, Love Shack. The Love Shack that airs every Thursday at 1 p.m. PST on KKNW 1150. Come on, Mike. Come on over and join us. We got gotcha. you. Your business deserves the same expertise as that of a Fortune 500 company. If you need a CIO level service, why hire a full-time staff member at $250,000 a year when you can get this on-demand service for fractions of the cost? As your CIO on demand, we'll give you the steps you need to take so as to minimize interruption to your business and profitability and provide you and your business with training and education to prevent future attacks. To get an efficiency review for your business today, contact us at www.ee-services.com. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mom. We're going to go right into our next segment, Stories You Didn't Know. Stories You Didn't Know. All right. Sadia Nudella is the chief officer CEO of Microsoft. Under him, Microsoft has more cloud computing and revenue than Google, more subscribers than Netflix, and nearly a trillion dollar of market capital before joining Maybe Microsoft. Netflix needs to come and talk to him. So you know what's really interesting? I actually supported this guy. When, I, he, when he was... When, so I was an executive support. When he was in line to... Oh, to, are you talking about it? At Microsoft. Actually, okay. So when I was at Microsoft, I actually supported him and I actually did work on his computer. Okay. So it was a pretty chill guy. So he was he was non confrontational, very easy to work with. He was a VP at the time. But let's talk about him. As he joined Microsoft as a young engineer in nineteen ninety two, a year after a year before I did. In two thousand he secured his first executive role as vice president of Microsoft Central. Since then there is no looking back for this Indian American engineer. The following year he was promoted to the corporate vice president of Microsoft Business Solutions. By 2007, he was the senior vice president of Microsoft Online Services and was put in charge of Bing. Bing. Microsoft Bing Bing. is all about him. So he created the Bing. That was his whole thing. It's now it's now Microsoft Bing. Yeah. So it used to be called Bing. Yeah. We we talked about that. that. It was renamed. That's right. Microsoft Bing. So so (laughs) make sure you get that right. He has overseen as the president the Server Tools Division, Azure Cloud Platform, SQL Server Database and has essentially taken the reins on February 4th, 2014 from CEO Steve Ballmer, who decided to step down. Okay. Steve and his, his wife, is the, they're the nicest people. You can ask my wife. His, his wife sent my wife like flowers and thanked him for a bunch of, yeah, so never mind. Okay. So, That's awesome. We're so, not talking uh, about We're him. not talking about it. All right. So they are, him and his wife are part owners of the Seattle Sounders FC, a major league soccer club. Mm-hmm. He's an avid reader of American and Indian poetry, mm-hmm. and he's passionate for cricket. Okay. Wouldn't Did, surprise me. Does he have cricket. a mega yacht? Uh, so his net worth is $320 million. So he doesn't have a mega yacht. So he doesn't because he's not like a billionaire. So or he's a, only a millionaire. Pool right, right. Table All right. He's, he's been floor. awarded. In 2019, he was awarded the Financial Times FT Person of the Year. Mm-hmm. Microsoft was at risk of a technology irrelevance, but the chief executive officer has turned Microsoft around and is considered the Barron's World's 30 best CEO and has been an active participant on that list. His autobiography hit refresh explores the life and his career in Microsoft. It elaborates on how technology will shape the future. Now, his philanthropic adventures include serving on the board of Fred Hutch Cancer Research Society and members of the board of trustees at the University of Chicago. Right. All proceeds from his book, Hit the Refresh, were given to all of Microsoft's charity philanthropic items that they wanted to participate in. So he didn't make any money off his book, which is yeah. pretty, pretty common if you're a CEO mm-hmm. of a company, you, you get that taken care of. And Microsoft in 2021, it's a very difficult time to talk because he specifically was asked about Bill Gates's affair. Uh oh. He said that a power dynamic in the workplace should not be abused and that employees should be comfortable raising concerns even many years after an incident took place. Over the power dynamics in the workplace, that is not something that should be abused, he said. 
But very interesting because he needs to be careful because karma might be coming back at him. As a former Microsoft board member said she took the blame when and was asked to resign as the CEO, said women should rely on karma. That's right. To get a raise the, the, in the October karma 2014 interview. quote. So that's been a big type of uh, issue that's hit the news. So he will continue to be the leader of Microsoft and will also have his comments talked about on many different stations. You're, you're getting a salute. I am. The, Dave is giving me the circle. Yep. That means we need to wrap it we up. Need to get it, we need to get gone. So I am Nathan Mum. I enjoyed being a part of the show today, our two hours. I thought we talked a lot of technology, a lot on filmmaking technology, so a little bit of a unique topic, but I enjoyed it. We have Mike Orday here. We got David Brown. Have a great day. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that mmm moment in technology today. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. And also signing up on our YouTube page, where you get to see us live in video. Yep, you can see us chat and have some fun. It's youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week. The views expressed on this program are those of the host.